All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Low Country Fishing. And in today's video, I'm gonna bring you some tips and trends on how to effectively fish on windy days. Now, if you haven't noticed already, that wind is really kicking up. And that's because historically during the months of April and March, that wind really kicks up blowing out of the Northeast, South and West. It brings cold fronts and warming trends. Uh, it's just a mess. The wind is all over the place, but fish can still be caught on these windy days. We just have to understand how to target fish in specific areas. Now, the areas that we are generally gonna be interested in fishing is out in bigger bodies of water, out around the sound, out around our larger river systems. We wanna be around these general areas, you guys, because that is where fish habitat is the most abundant during the, uh, the warmer months or during the warming trends like we're on right now. So what we have going on right now is we're in the middle of a transition, right? The winter time, fish are in the back, they're in the creeks, they're in these deep holes, redfish and trout specifically. And once the water temperatures start to warm up, those fish are migrating out of the back and they're coming up front into the bigger rivers and into our sound. Not to mention our flounder that were offshore spawning, those big females, they are basically fluttering right up the uh, shoreline like that, coming up our, our beaches and up our sandbars. And they're gonna start settling in and around these, these oyster beds around the sound just the same. And we wanna be able to get out there and we wanna target these fish because that's where they're gonna be, right? Now, the reason that they're gonna be there is because one, the water clarity is a lot better. Two, the salinity levels are higher. Three, the water's gonna be a little bit cooler during these uh, uh, warmer months like summertime. Four, there's a lot of bait that's gonna be in these areas. And five, there's a ton of structure points in and around the sound. And it gives you really a large area to fish with a lot of options. So it gives you the option to basically bounce around and spot, spot hop around all over the place. And uh, that's really why we wanna be there. Now, first and foremost, before we kick off this video, guys, if you are interested in upping your fishing game and getting more information like this, like this video today, guys, come check me out on Patreon. I do these videos all the time, talking about tips and trends and strategies and on the water and off the water trip reports. I even go into satellite mapping and I show you exactly where to go and fish so you can find somewhere to go catch fish on those rough days because we have all had those days. And I'm telling you guys, all that stuff is on Patreon and it will cost you less money than a, a quarter shrimp at your local bait shop. So definitely come check me out if you're interested in stuff like this. Now, let's jump into the tips part. So one of the things that I want you guys to make sure you're doing is pre-tripping or pre-trip planning every single trip that you do. I want you to look at the winds. I want you to look at the weather. I want you to look at the tides. I want you to look at the salooner windows, figure out when those fish are feeding the most. And I want you to get all of that vision and all those data points in to picking out your spot. Now, when it comes to winds, I like to use an app called the Windy app. The Windy app is really good for giving me wind speed and direction. As far as the tides and the salooner window, I like tidesforfishing.com. Uh, they will, it will basically let me know at what tide cycle throughout the day I'm going to be on. It will also let me know when that major minor feeding window is going to kick off and how good that window is based on moon being overhead, down on the feed or out, out here on the horizons or, or whatnot, because that is when fish feed the most. That's what a lot of people don't really understand is uh, catching big fish is going to be caught on the moon. Uh, so with knowing all that, we need to really kind of get a game plan together. So what we need to do is basically open up that windy app, drop a pin on an area of interest and see what the wind speed and the direction is for that area. Now, me personally, I have preferences. I have cutoffs for wind. If I'm going to be fishing out in the sound or around larger bodies of water, I am not going to be out there if that wind is over 15 miles an hour. Uh, it's not going to be good conditions out there. I'm going to get a lot of uh, line management issues. The water is going to be extremely muddy around the edges due to uh, the uh, the wind kicking up the waves and causing that pluff mud to really get uh, uh, mixed up and uh, uh, agitated and whatnot. Not to mention, I'm putting out a lot of noise profile out there on the water with that water slapping against the structure, the shoreline, and my boat, and it just becomes too much of an issue. So on the days when it's extremely windy or over 15, I one, don't fish, or two, I head for the back country where I have wind protection around some tree lines or some creek lines where I have residential docks and whatnot, and I find something to put in between me and that wind so I can be comfortable searching for fish. Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna figure out what wind direction that, uh, that wind is blowing out of. And what I like to do is I like to really fish the wind blown shorelines during these warmer months. Now, if it was colder, I'm not gonna fish the wind blowing shorelines because that is where the wind, that's where the water temps are gonna be a little bit cooler and the fish aren't gonna be as active. But on these warming trend days or on these warmer days where that water is hitting the shoreline, that's where the water is gonna kind of get kicked up a little bit. You're gonna get a little bit better dissolved oxygen because that water and air is gonna mix and it's gonna increase the, uh, the DO2 in that area and make the fish more happy. Not to mention that, 
I have the wind coming across my shoulders and allowing me to make a straight cast, long booming cast and keep my line nice and tight. If you get out here and you, and you fish these spots and you are fishing into the wind, what you're gonna notice is one, you're probably gonna get a lot of line management issues. You're gonna get a lot of birds nesting in your reel. You're not gonna have a really long cast. Your cast is not gonna be extremely accurate. If you're throwing corks, you're probably gonna throw the biggest uh, tornado or helicopter you've ever thrown in your life. And it just makes it really difficult. Not only that, you gotta get closer to the structure. So you have to put your boat and your presence closer to that piece of uh, structure you're interested in fishing. So now the fish know you're there because your trolling motor is working hard to stay up in that general area. And it's just not good. You go in there and you'll probably blow the, uh, blow the fish out whether you know it or not. And you're just getting beat up the whole time. So I don't like to fish into the wind. I like to use the wind to my advantage. So like I was saying, what I'll do is on that map, I'll basically pick a shoreline that is being hit by the wind. And that's the shoreline that I will pick. I'll, piece of, I'll pick a piece of structure that I'm most interested in, whether if it's a dock, a grass line, uh, oyster beds, any type of structure down there. Maybe uh, there's a rock pile or something like that. And that's the piece of structure that I will fish because fish are naturally attracted to structure. So with that being said, I'll go out to the sound, I'll spot lock down, I'll throw my big anchor, a casting distance away from that piece of structure in the near vicinity area that I'm interested in fishing. And that is where I will keep that boat. Now, most likely I'm gonna be fishing off the back of the boat, which is fine. If you have a boat that has a giant T-top, it may be a little bit difficult for you because casting is kind of hard with that big thing uh, right behind you because you can't fish off the front because the way the boat is going to swing around. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. But for me, I have a lot of room on the back of my boat to uh, cast and whatnot. And I'm just gonna start covering water on that windblown side. Now, when it comes to picking what's tied to fish, there's a couple different strategies. Uh, I have one honestly preferred over the other, but I will talk you through both. Now, if you do wanna get out here and you wanna target fish on that windblown structure at low tide, what we have to realize is all those fish that were up there on that structure feeding are now gonna be pulled back to that nearby depth change, right? This is one of my big four I talk about on Patreon as well. So as fish pull back to that nearby depth change or onto that ledge or off of that structure, guys, that is where these fish are going to be held. So if you're gonna to try to target fish at low tide around the oyster beds, or around the dock and whatnot, what I want you to do is I want you to fish Carolina rigs down on the bottom with some sort of live shrimp or cut bait using short four to five inch liters, two watt or three watt circle hooks and about a half ounce to a three quarters of an ounce of weight and just play with that weight because you want that thing to be still. Pull up into these general areas, throw three lines out, one here, one here, one here. Ha, ha, ha and then just basically cover water that way with your base. And what's gonna happen, you guys, is that water that is very shallow is gonna be very dirty. It's gonna be very muddy. It's gonna be a lot of noise profile out there. So throw in your popping corks or swim in your paddle tails or anything like that where you're gonna dance a bait around. It's not gonna be as easily seen or picked up because the water clarity is muddy, not to mention the, the noise profile is up. Anytime you're fishing shallow water, noise resonates a lot easier and uh, causes uh, a lot of disturbance on the water which is why if you fish deeper water, that noise gets lost really quick and, you, and it allows you the option to, uh, to use a higher noise profile uh, type of bait. Not to mention, it doesn't spook the fish because they're, they're out there like, what the heck is that? You know what I mean? So that is why I like to fish those Carolina rigs. And what the Carolina rig is really gonna do is it's gonna just basically put scent out there. In these lower, uh, uh, lower tide areas around these oyster beds in about two to three feet of water, that's where your redfish are gonna be. That's where your flounder are gonna be. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna basically pick up the scent on that mud minnow. They're gonna pick up the scent on that shrimp or on that cut bait. And they're just gonna work their way over to your three rod spread until they figure out where that deliciousness is coming from. And they're gonna go eat that thing. Now, one of the benefits of fishing this way, soaking live bait at low tide with the wind is the fact that you're not gonna really have a lot of line management issues because you're not casting and retrieving. You're just gonna cast that thing out, let it set, put it in the rod holder or Rodney as I like to talk about it, Tighten that drag all the way down tight, not locked down, but really close, and just let that rod sit in the holder. Let Rodney hold that thing. And here's the key, guys. Don't pick that thing up until that rod is completely bowed over and bent over. A lot of people will start to see the rod tip do this thing. They'll pick that rod tip up right off the bat, and they'll start reeling because they're excited they have a fish. Guys, don't do that. Leave that rod in the holder until that thing buckles over, because what happens at that point is that fish grabs that bait, starts to swim away with it, that circle hook that you're using will come out of the back of its throat or possibly even its stomach because that's what circle hooks do. And it will wrap around and it will catch that fish right here in the corner of the mouth and the lower jaw or here, depending on which direction it's spinning off. And it will hook itself. 
once it's bending over like that, that's basically the fish applying weight to that hook and you want that fish to have that uh, weight applied. Let that fish hook itself, leave it in the rod holder. If you pick it up and give that rod any little bit of slack, that might be just enough to lose that fish. So leave it in the rod holder until it starts doing this right here. Once it starts bumping a couple times, it's good to go. That fish is uh, basically hooked and all you have to do is just pick it up and reel it in. Very similar to how when we were kids and dad handed you a loaded rod, so here you go, son, reel it in. That's all you gotta do, reel it in, net the fish at the boat, and there you go. But very simple, easy strategy for fishing in the wind at low tide, guys. Get out here with the cut bait, fish uh, in that two to three foot range, and hold on tight. Now, on the opposite tide, on the high tide, this is where you can pull your popping corks out. This is where you can pull your paddle tails out, your chatter bait, your lip, uh, lipped crank baits, or any type of bait that gets out there and puts a flash or a presence a noise profile is out there. You can also use scent just the same with anything dangling under that popping cork. You can use Procure on your uh, artificial paddle tails because now not only can they smell it, they can see it, right? So that's when you're gonna pull all those different types of baits out and you're gonna fish on top of the oysters, around the edges of the grasses, uh, uh, in front of the oysters, all the way around, but you're gonna basically cover water in that general area. But again, you want to fish downwind. You want to be upwind of the structure that you're wanting to fish. That way you have a nice straight and tight lines. You don't have, uh, you're not casting out to the side and getting, you know, big bows in your line like this. So when you go to set the hook, you're, you know, you're just fighting through all that loose line that's out there and you wind up missing the fish. Make sure you're fishing directly downwind and that will cause uh, a lot of, uh, or get rid of a lot of the, the grief that you're gonna have with line management issues. And that is it, you guys. That, that's, that's pretty much what it takes to get out here and to effectively catch fish in the wind. Uh, so in this video, I've covered all kinds of tips and tactics as far as everything, as far as uh, uh, what apps to use, how to spot select, how to fish different tides, what baits and lures work out there. And uh, that's all you gotta do, guys. Just get out here, try, work through some of these areas. Not every spot holds fish. We do have to understand that 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. So sometimes we have to work through spots to find the fish. But you know what? It is what it is. It's fishing. Sometimes you run into the mother load and you catch 10 or 15 at one spot. And sometimes you have to hit one fish at every single spot. I've been through it. I've done it. Uh, it just is what it is. So that's all I got for today. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you enjoyed this video or these types of videos, uh, drop a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section down below. I'm happy to put content out there for you guys. Uh, but just do know this is really a service that I have pushed over to my patrons primarily. So if you're interested in getting more information and higher detail stuff, guys, head over to Patreon. The stuff I do here on YouTube just barely scratches the surface. What I do over on Patreon, I give it all away, man. I'm telling you, it's really good stuff. I wish stuff like that was around when I started fishing here years ago. So thank you again for the support. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care, you guys. God bless.